Oh, wow. I've often been accused of identity theft. I actually have a good idea of what this might be because there are some really famous examples of stones that people thought were something. And then after modern testing came about, they realized there was something else. So in our Green Gems episode, we talked about how Cleopatra thought Peridot was emerald. Ooh. Oh, I love this piece. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is beautiful. So this is spinel. This is a gorgeous piece of spinel on a piece of marble. It's commonly found in marble and other metamorphic rock. But what immediately caught my eye is the habit of the crystals on it. So you can see this triangular, it looks kind of like a series of pyramids. Spinel is in the cubic crystal system. It often forms in octahedral crystals, which is basically like two pyramids on top of one another. Diamond also forms in this way, and it's so smooth actually. In the spinel group, they are a group of aluminum oxides that have things like zinc, magnesium, iron, but spinel as the variety is a magnesium aluminum oxide. So MgAl2O4, it has a hardness of eight on the Mohs scale. It has no planes of cleavage, so it's a really durable stone. It's great for, for jewelry or for any kind of everyday wear. Spinel comes in all sorts of colors, reds, pinks, violets, purples, blues. You can have greenish, you can have colorless, gray. Spinel is an allochromatic gemstone, which means when in its purest form, it's actually colorless, but to find it in its purest form is pretty rare. And so for red spinel, it's colored by chromium. For blues, it's colored by iron and cobalt. For purples and oranges, it's colored by a combination of iron and chromium. And so you have a lot of different elements that contribute to its color. And one thing that I really love about spinel is it's usually untreated. You have heat treatment sometimes, but for the most part, the colors that you see, they can be really vivid and vibrant and they're often untreated. So spinel is often used as what's called an indicator stone. And an indicator stone is essentially a stone that is found with other stones that indicate that those are in a similar deposit or locality. So for example, garnet is an indicator stone for diamond. So when people see garnet, it can indicate that there's also diamond in that locality. Spinel often forms in metamorphic rock in places like Myanmar, Vietnam, Sri Lanka. And in those places, you also have really high quality sapphires and rubies. It's often found in alluvial deposits. So these are deposits that have formed as a result of erosion and weathering from their original metamorphic rock. It's really cool to be able to see the spinel in its host rock and also to see it with such perfect form in its octahedrons because again, these are often water-worn tumbled pieces. Although I'm the black sheep of the family, I'm probably the most likely to be found in your jewelry box. Oh, and I have some rare qualities too. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm gonna put this on. So black spinel is actually really interesting to me because it's an opaque gemstone that has this gorgeous brilliance to it. And so you can see in this cuff bracelet, it just sparkles. A lot of black gemstones, they can be dull in their luster, but this is a really cool gemstone that provides a, a sparkle and a brilliance, but it's black. All right, so we got a handy dandy flashlight because this spinel displays a really cool optical phenomenon called asterism. Asterism is a star-like effect that occurs as a result of multiple intersecting sets of parallel needle-like inclusions. And when these inclusions are in sufficient enough quantities, they can produce this star. So it's really important to have a few things for asterism. It needs to be cut in a certain way. The inclusions need to be oriented in a certain way. Then a handy light is always good. So the star can really pop. 
This is what we're trying to be, but don't let us fool you. This is what we're trying to be, but don't let us fool you. Okay. Ah, huh, huh. That makes sense. Okay, so what I see are four bulls, B-O-U-L-E. These are the result of something called flame fusion. So flame fusion is a process whereby you create synthetic gemstones. Synthetic spinel is actually one of the most common types of synthetics on the market. There's a man named Vernoy in the early 1900s. He popularized something called Vernoy flame fusion. So essentially what you have is powdered materials. In this case, you would have magnesium aluminum oxide and it would be exposed to a super hot hydrogen oxygen flame and it would melt and then it would melt onto the rotating plate would slowly descend as the crystal gets larger and you have a bull as a result. There are a few key characteristics that kind of give a Vernoy flame fusion synthetics away. When looking at them under a loop or a microscope, they often have curved growth lines, which mirrors their form of growth on this rotating pedestal. These bulls, the green one is actually a great example. The green and yellow are great examples of, of the curved growth that occurs while making these flame fusion synthetics. So you often see curved growth lines and gas bubble inclusions, and that can be a great way to differentiate between your natural spinel and your synthetic spinel. Natural spinel has some key inclusions. So like we said, spinel is part of the cubic crystal system. It often forms in octahedral habits, but the cool thing is a popular inclusion is octahedral crystals. Sometimes this can be spinel or it can be other negative inclusions that are filled with other minerals like zircon are common inclusions in spinel. It's a type two clarity stone, which means that sometimes it will have eye visible inclusions, but you can also find it with without eye visible inclusions. You can find internally clean spinels. This is a, a really pretty greenish blue spinel. We actually haven't done advanced testing on this to know its cause of color but it likely is colored by iron it could be cobalt but you know now that we're talking about synthetics versus natural versus identity thieves let's talk a little bit about how to separate these with one of my favorite methods of gem testing the spectroscope you can use a spectroscope to look at how gems absorb and transmit light. What you see in a standard spectroscope is the visible light spectrum. And then you'll see lines of dark banding, so like black lines, or sometimes you can actually see colored lines. The black lines are absorption lines and that, that indicates what wavelengths the gems are absorbing. And then the colored lines are what are called emission lines, which are indications of light or energy that the gem is emitting. Red spinel is colored by chromium. Another popular gemstone colored by chromium is ruby. And they actually have very similar spectra, which means they have very similar absorption patterns. And so when you're looking at them, in a spectroscope, it's really important to be able to tell some of the key differences between the two. I, I actually have a particular fondness for spinel because I think for a really long time it got overlooked for things like ruby and blue spinel for sapphire. And I think that it has so many of its own merits that, that we should really take time to appreciate it. You know, some of the most famous rubies are actually spinels. The Black Princess Ruby that's in the British Imperial Crown, the Timur Ruby, which is actually also a red spinel. And so you have a lot of prominence throughout history of red spinel and other spinels, but you know, for a long time because they didn't turn out to be the expensive ruby, the expensive sapphire. People actually got kind of discouraged when they found out that it was spinel. So I think that we should have a resurgence in the love of spinel. Pinks and reds are actually quite expensive and valuable now. And I actually love that because they have so many good merits on their own and we should celebrate spinel for what it is. I'm gonna cheat 
and say I like this duo the best. I think that the red spinel contrasted with the white marble and this this marble that is like it's so clean and pristine. I love the look of spinel on on marble. So take a look at the crystal and then in its faceted form and let's appreciate spinel for all the beauty that it gives us. I love red and pink spinels, but I'm curious what color spinels are your favorite? Let us know down in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. And if you want to learn more about spinel, go to our website, gemstones.com, where you can read all about this fascinating gemstone. Thanks for watching.